Webster's Dictionary defines analysis as... I can't start the video like that, but I do want to talk about what musical analysis is, and despite its appearance, this is actually not a beginner's question. In my teaching, I'm surprised by the number of students who can go to college, study music, and graduate without really engaging with this question. So, hi, this is Simon, and this is a short video talking about what is musical analysis. So, as corny as it is, let's jump back to Webster. Defining analysis as an examination of something complex to understand its nature or determine its essential features. We can all agree that music is complex. It can convey meaning. It can convey emotion. We engage with it physically. And it has a number of cultural meanings. Jumping down to the second definition, analysis is a separation of a whole into its component parts. Oftentimes when we talk about analysis, we talk about Roman numeral analysis, breaking a piece down into its harmonies, but there are lots of other ways that we can break down music. Harmonic analysis is just one way to analyze music, and obviously it's only useful in analyzing pieces that have harmonic content. It's not terribly useful, for example, in looking at a snare drum solo, a Ghanaian drumming piece, or even Gregorian chant. So why would we do this? Why would we want to break down a piece of music to its component parts? If you're a composer or songwriter, perhaps this isn't a hard question. You're just trying to find things to steal. And of course, stealing is a great way to improve. When you steal, you make things your own. But perhaps more broadly useful is to think about it as gaining insight about a piece, which can be useful for us as a performer, perhaps sharing things that aren't immediately obvious in the score, phrasing, dynamics. But this is also useful for us as listeners. Understanding how music works can help us appreciate a piece, and that knowledge of one piece can help us approach other pieces, too. So what should we do and what should we talk about when we analyze? First, let's break things down into smaller parts. How about a single note? A single note, unfortunately, doesn't mean much. But when I place it in relationship to another note, now we have an interval. And then once we have that interval, we can use that to think about the other intervals that happen moving forward. Similarly, here's a chord. Even a single chord doesn't mean much. But once I have two chords, I can start thinking about their relationship. Things matter in relationship to each other. That said, let's not get too hung up on pitches. We can analyze looking at rhythm, at texture, at tessitura, at timbre, and even start looking at the piece in a larger context. Even if I label all of the chords in a piece, I'm not sure I've yet provided any kind of clarity or insight, which is our goal. Once components are labeled, I need to synthesize them back together to make a statement about the piece. I need to think now about what kind of statements I can make. Breaking down the piece and looking at the component parts has given me tools to talk about certain things objectively. But since we're talking about music which is expressive and subjective, I have to think about how I can use that objective evidence to support a statement that's perhaps subjective. Once you have your objective analysis done, Providing insight is going to depend on you advocating for the significance of this analysis. You need to have an angle, you need to have an opinion, and you need to use your objective information to support it. 